Hello everyone, this is Andrew from the Defeated Foundation and welcome to the Supernova Demo Day, the day that we've been waiting for since the May 10th kickoff event. Thank you everyone for joining us live and thank you so much for all the teams who have submitted their projects for Supernova. We are seeing some incredible things being built on the internet computer and we cannot wait to see our finalists today to present their, their depths. All right, we are on a tight schedule today, so without wasting more precious time, let me just introduce the man that needs no introduction our founder and chief scientist, Dominic Williams. Dom, take it away. Yes, you thank yeah. you. Great, okay. So uh, welcome everybody um, to the first global internet computer hackathon. Um, we launched this event um, to mark the first anniversary of Genesis when the internet computer span out and became part of the pu public internet. It's already been so successful. I'm sure we'll run many more hackathons, possibly even, even soon. But I think in hindsight, this, this first hack, global hackathon will be seen to be historic. Um, so well done to everybody who's um, chosen to be part of it. Um, the crypto winter, uh, I think, is gonna be very positive because it's gonna, it's gonna slowly return crypto to its roots, where technology, vision, and impact are mattered far more than hyper-marketing. So being part of this project really is being on the right side of history. Um, thanks to the efforts of the ICP community, um, thousands of entrepreneurs and developers who want to build out the future of Web3 have been onboarded onto the internet computer over the past year. The I ICP ecosystem is accelerating and booming, um, even while the market's uh, pretty horrible. Technically speaking, the network um, will hit a billion blocks um, soon after this, this hackathon. But what's even more exciting is that we have vibrant developer forums, um, 101,000, 101,000 canisters deployed on the internet computer today, many of which um, are, are individual dApps and services. And there are, there are hundreds of pretty impressive Web3 dApps and, and, and services now, now running. And now, of course, we have this incredible hackathon. Um, I believe we've got about 3,700 participants. Um, and there were actually 400 projects submitted, which is just, just mind blowing. And I think speaks just to how quickly um, this, this, this ecosystem and community has grown. Um, so for me and, and, and everyone at Definity, thank you um, to everyone who, who's helped, you know, make, make this possible, um, including the participants, obviously, um, everybody in the ICP community that, that um, has sort of taken us to, to, to this moment, um, our incredible sponsors um, and judges, and of course, everybody at, at Definity that, that's worked so hard um, to get this event off, off the ground. I will say this, no, no developer that ever tried building on the internet computer blockchain, then decided to go and build on another blockchain. So, fairly concretely um, today and through this hackathon, our community just got a hell of a lot bigger and, and, and that's fantastic. Um, everyone here, you know, is really a shepherd of the next internet and, and web three. And um, so, you know, it's an incredible thing to be here. Um, give, given the large number um, of some submissions, um, we really have to extend huge congratulations um, to, to those that have made it through to the finals. I mean, the competition's ferocious. There was a lot of amazing work submitted. So if you've got this far, well done. Um, it, it, that was fantastic. And, and you know, we, we wish you the very best of luck. Um, if you didn't make it this far, um, please stay with the project and, and keep on rocking the future of Web3. We want you as part of this community and I should mention just quickly that, you know, if you're looking for funding, the Definity Foundation gives out grants. And very, very shortly, um, 
the service nervous system DAO functionality will become available. I, I've heard on the grapevine, it should finally arrive around the end of July. And that's going to be an absolute game changer for Web3 developers and entrepreneurs who want to, um, you know, get, get ambitious projects off the, get the ground and, and grow them. So, um, all right, without further ado, um, let's get on with the demos and judging. Thank you again to everyone who's here. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Tom. And now uh, let me pass it to Yeji Kim, our new senior, uh, uh, senior program manager. And she, even though she just recently joined the company, she has already greatly contributed to the success of Supernova. Yeji, take it away. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, uh, before we start the, the demonstrations and judgings, I wanted to uh, share some exciting news and the uh, things about the, the ICP for everyone. So as uh, Dominic mentioned, Supernova has exceeded um, our expectations with nearly 4,000 um, developers participating in the hackathon. Um, and I wanted to like share some exciting things uh, about the um, ICP with everybody here uh, who is joining the, the event today. So the first and the foremost, the ICP ecosystem is predominantly a community of builders and uh, a blockchain technology enthusiast. Um, this is evident when comparing the buzzing activities in the ICP developer forum. And our um, R&D te team actively interacts with the IC community, uh, encouraging participations in the um, governance and the techno technical advancements of the IC. The IC is updated on a weekly basis, uh, as you already uh, may have noticed, um, and new features are being proposed uh, for a community vote. So together with the IC community, we are creating innovative features like BTC integrations and service nervous system. And the second thing is the breadth of use cases possible on the IC. So while many chains either uh, struggle with uh, scaling their networks, um, outages, or um, even running smart contracts, it's clear that the IC seamlessly scale as new nodes are added to the network and developers are able to build whatever they can imagine from DeFi to NFTs, to games, social media, and the metaverse projects. The uh, internet, uh, internet computer continues to be the only chain where um, entrepreneurs and developers can literally build anything. So that is quite exciting for the developers and especially for those who are joining this demo um, presentation today. And third is a strong sense of community. From uh, developers uh, helping each other get unstuck uh, to cross project collaborations to, to a culture of kindness, the IC ecosystem continues to build out the community that's welcoming to all and driven by a shared belief in, in a web free future, 100% on chain. And finally, the launch of Origin a few weeks ago demonstrates the thesis that smart teams with a good idea can build an exciting project capable of creating hundreds of millions in value. So we hope to see more projects launch, especially those with supernova beginnings. And we are greatly looking forward to watching all these amazing teams um, and the projects uh, demo uh, on, on our supernova demo, uh, demonstration day today. And as a reminder to all of the teams, please reach out to Divinity to learn more about receiving a non-dilutive grant to keep building and helping build out web free on the internet computer. Thank you very much and good luck for everybody. Thanks a lot, Yechi. Yeah, hearing my colleagues uh, speak about the IC makes me excited about the internet computer every day. It's, uh, it's great to hear uh, different perspectives and, and what great things are happening on the IC. All right, so if we can share the, the slides and look at the, the agenda for today. Amazing. All right. So anyone who submitted their projects for Supernova had the, the option to choose from six tracks. And these are the six tracks here. We have Social Fi, Game Fi, Metaverse, and NFTs, a really popular one. Asynchronous DeFi, that is just in the, the baby stages on the IC. Public Good or Social Impact. And if you didn't fit into any of these categories, then you could apply for Blue Sky, a kind of schedule. 
And if we can go to the, ah, oh, wonderful. Yes. Uh, so currently we are in the main room and soon we will, we will split into different sessions. There are six rooms, one for each category and teams will be presenting in, in, these, uh, in these rooms. If you are joining us from Zoom, then you can just join either look at these sessions from the lobby or enter the rooms uh, separately and watch the, the demos from there. We will have seven presentations. Each will have six minutes uh, for presenting and then three minutes for Q&A. We are very strict on time, so our moderators will kick you off if you go, kick you out, kick you off, uh, cut you off, sorry, if you are, if you are going over time. Um, this, the main room will be more or less silent until or while the, these teams are presenting, and then we'll be back at 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, and if um, yeah, if you need need uh, help from us, just uh, uh, put your comments or questions into into the chat in the lobby area. All right, and one last uh, thing I wanted to mention before we go into the demos. Yes, Supernova would not be possible without our partners, and we really appreciate all the help we got. And um, all right, so without further ado, I'll I'll stop talking and. Uh, can you can all go now into the into the different sessions? Make sure that the judges are there and uh, and the participants are ready to to show their incredible demos. I'll be hanging out in the meantime in the in the main room if someone is uh, is lost and um, and needs some some assistance. All right. <clears throat> Welcome, welcome back everyone to the main room. And uh, I hope you guys had fun looking at the different uh, demos in the separate tracks. Of course, no demo day would be complete without some technical issues. So we are a few minutes later on a couple of the tracks, but otherwise we're doing good. Um, now, let me give the word to Adriana Hamaker, a senior correspondent at Decrypt, who will be moderating the founder panel discussion. And Adriana, before you before you start, let me just say that I think we can run maybe two minutes over time, so the judges have two to three minutes over time, so the judges have enough time to to deliver deliberate in all the all the tracks that we have. And yeah, without further ado, uh, take it away. Great, and you thanks, are. Andrew. Thank you very much. Um, hi, and thanks for joining me on the exciting occasion of Internet Computer Supernova Demo Day. Um, I have three very special guests with me um, who are OG founders and founding team members building on the Internet Computer with great success. Um, so welcome, Cassidy Hilzer of Origin, um, Mike Chamberlain of Infinity Swap, and Rick Porter of Discover. Um, great to see you guys. Um, Cassidy, let's hear from you first. Um, Origin is a certification platform for the fine art community, and you're one of the first and earliest teams to build um, on the internet computer. And now is the first project to mainnet, and your OGY governance token is public. Um, what advice can you you give to new Web3 entrepreneurs based on Origin's journey from building in stealth to raising funds from the likes of Paris Hilton and Bill Ackerman to onboarding the who's who of luxury goods makers and listing DEXs and centralized exchanges. So tell me, yeah, what's, your, what's the story here? I would say that uh, really the key for us has been a combination of being willing to move really nimbly and quickly uh, in, in a very rapidly evolving, evolving space, but also to be um, really good listeners. Because I'm always thinking about on the, the marketing side, um, our growing community and those individuals that we are bringing into our ecosystem and helping to educate about um, the work that we're doing and the long road ahead. As you've just said, we have just launched our, our OGY token, um, went live on Sonic, the decentralized exchange and two centralized exchanges, MEXC Global and then Bitru. Um, and that really was a beginning for us. Um, and so it was about, you know, the, the ultimate process of finding individuals who understand the value of joining an ecosystem for a long haul journey with you. Um, and that's something that was really at the core, very important for Origin is identifying those individuals and being very keenly aware to listen. What are the things that they need that they're looking to hear to help them to understand what we're doing? Um, and that's been a primary focus for, for us really since the beginning and runs through with us today. 
That sounds amazing. I'll come back to you later, but let's move on um, now to Max from Infinity Swap. Um, you guys, you're one of the newer projects on the internet computer. Um, and you and your co-founder have a familiar founding story. You both um, came out of Cambridge, previously worked at startups, then joined forces, and you found product fit with Infinity Swap based on your ability to raise capital from some of the most big web three VCs. Um, so tell us about that journey and how were you able to differentiate yourselves to those VCs? Yeah, it's been quite a long journey in crypto. Um, so Alex and I, we've both been crypto geeks for quite a long time, you know, even coming out of Cambridge. I have this anecdote that I, that I tell people about, about one of my uh, uh, colleagues at the time or, or uh, fellow students mining crypto from using the computer science department's machinery hardware to do so. So uh, you know, it's been- They it's know been about that? <laughs> well, they do now, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, you know, it, it's, been a, it's been a really interesting journey for us as technologists. And I think you know, just being carried by our passions and you know, the interest in tech, which is groundbreaking, is kind of what you know, get, you know, gets us there. It is keeping that curiosity, that keenness alive, uh, wanting to learn what's the newest, the best thing, what's uh, what's going to be make the most scalable blockchain, the best platform for whatever DApp you want to build. I think it's it's kind of been that which has really pushed us forward, and I think led us to the Internet Computer Blockchain uh, uh, Protocol, where we see you know things like the Bitcoin integration taking place, SNS native governance. And I think that's what you know. All the other developers are here for as well uh, at at uh, Supernova. And in in terms of differentiating yourself to a VC, I think it's a kind of a, a similar, familiar story. They're looking for founders who are passionate about what they're building. They're looking for a, a technical edge. So you know, if you're building on um, a blockchain that can differentiate itself by hosting smart, you know, um, hosting. Uh, web facing smart contracts or you know being able to deploy their own your own websites uh, on the blockchain in a completely decentralized way uh, that is something that will you know excite them and you know, even though we've been going through a bit of a, uh, a downturn uh, at this moment you know there are still plenty of VCs out there who are really forward forward looking and thinking about the future of, of web3 so yeah I would, I would say that. So people should not be discouraged by the fact that we're we're kind of in a bit of a downturn in the market at the moment. Yeah, no, no. projects looking for investors. I think if you can if you can bear better it, and it can be hard as an entrepreneur to do so, but if you can you know uh, scrimp your savings together and do what you can, I know that that's how we started. You know, <laughs> with your own savings in the back pocket or with with the family and friends, then you know that can carry you through to better times. But there's still plenty of uh, VC money out there, even with uh, the markets the way the way it is. Okay, cool. Well, look, that, let's now go to Rick Porter um, of Discover, which is a decentralized social media platform. Um, and you guys were some of the earliest entrepreneurs building on the internet computer also. Um, it's really interesting that you have a background in Solidity um, on Ethereum, as well as working at a big tech company. So do you have any advice for developers working nights and weekends on ICP to recruit a team and to raise capital and onboard a hundred thousand users like you've managed to do, which is quite an achievement. Rick, I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, looks like we may have lost Rick. Let me try to grab Rick, and in the meantime, we can move on. Okay, well, look, let me throw that question out then to you two, um, Cassidy and Max. Um, do you have advice for developers um, who are working nights and weekends on ICP? How, I mean, how do they go about recruiting the team and raising? I mean, we've mentioned a little bit about raising capital, but what about onboarding users? Either of you who would like to mention answer yeah so i'll talk about team finding the team yeah it could be 
good friends of yours from school, could be good friends of yours from college. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to find that nexus and that passion uh, to carry you through uh, the long nights and you know the the coding that's needed to get up apps. So if you know people who can start hacking around projects with on the weekends, you know that's that's probably where you could start. And as you grow and scale up your team, of course, you know the search widens and uh, conferences are a great place to meet people. I've just come back from uh, one in Barcelona, and you know there's there's plenty of developers, plenty of excitement. I think uh, there's the the ETH conference in Barcelona coming up too, so maybe a few of them will be looking to switch over to other blockchain ecosystems, and you know the IC is a great one. So, <laughs> what uh, is the kind of situation in Europe in terms of developers. I mean, there's loads of conferences kind of going on now, but um, you know, how, how how healthy is the the sort of European developer um, community? There is a, a huge amount of excitement uh, for blockchain, uh, you know, in Europe, and I think in most universities have their own blockchain societies. So they certainly did at Cambridge, uh, at Imperial. Events are hosted and it's not just for like, uh, you know, really expensive business type people. It's also, you know, there are st things that spring out of universities and you get some really great speakers uh, attending, uh, attending those. So I think there was one in Cambridge uh, a few months ago and uh, they had the people like Wintermute, the big algorithmic market making traders, a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, young people also interested in development. And yeah, definitely, I think Europe is is a, is a place to be if you wanna if you wanna network. Yeah, I would just, just, just I was gonna say you're on the other side of the pond on the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luxury brands and celebrities. So how does it work? <laughs> yeah, just just to add to that, I, I think you know from from the way that Origin has been viewing it is really with a truly global eye. And that has only enriched us because when we're thinking about staffing and growing and man, we have been growing so quickly. And I, I think now we're at almost, almost 80 people. Um, and that is fully with a global eye looking for the people that you know are really going to fit the niche of that role and that need versus where they live. And, and we've been able to flex like, you know, I will have meetings at 5.30 a.m. and then you have meetings at 11 p.m. And yes, that is really long hours and can be a lot of challenge. But when you're working with people who are equally motivated and excited to, to really define something and bring something out there that hasn't been built before, um, it, it's about finding those, those right people and those excited, energetic individuals who are able to think not really just internationally, but also just like the global mindset. And that has really been key for Origin. Amazing. And um, the fact that you have the celebs on board, I mean, is that kind of a big differentiating factor for you? Because, um, you know, you're, you're based in the home of sort of celebrities. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm just wondering how much of a difference it makes and how sort of other projects might go about interesting kind of high profile mm. individuals and getting them on board. That's actually a great question, right? So, so of course, I'm based out of um, LA, right? And to your point, there's one part of our business. So for those of you who aren't uh, fully familiar with Origin, we are going to be powering an upcoming NFT marketplace called Impossible Things. Um, and we work with a series of Web3 creators um, who will be curating collections for that upcoming marketplace. And a lot of these individuals are very high profile. They come in bringing a strong background and um, certainly their own audiences and their own brand. And there's a lot of value add to be able to work with those individuals, not just from the, fa the fact that they're bringing in a subset of people and an existing audience, but also they have an established creativity and way of approaching um, problems and, and ways of you know, collaborating that really enhance our ecosystem. So there is definitely a lot of benefit to it. I would say that it can't be your only approach, however, right? So with Origin, for example, we, we are really focused on utility. 
um, and, and trust and thinking about, you know, our certificates are all about uh, establishing that authenticity, that proof of ownership, identity, provenance. Um, and it really is going to come back to that for us, regardless of who we're partnering with or working with or bringing into the ecosystem. Um, it's about providing something in market that actually has a strong utility and a use case and that people will adopt and, and love and, and care about and serves a, a need and, and addresses a friction point. Um, so yes, it's certainly a really important part of what we do in helping to communicate things and also an enliven and broaden our ecosystem, but it's kind of just building on that core of value that is so important to us. So it's not just about mining Paris Hilton's address book. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> she must have some good stuff in there though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Assuredly, yes. <laughs> okay, I just want to check with Andrew if we manage to get Rick um, back, back on, on board, but, uh, but if not, we'll, we'll just move on. Actually, it looks like we are a few minutes away from getting Rick, so oh, I think we can right, have one okay. question and then Rick, uh, Rick is back. Right. Okay. So, um, Max, you guys at Infinity Swap. I mean, you know, you following a different model. Um, I mean, out of your your kind of your group, your development group, sort of, what is the makeup of people? I mean, do you spend a lot of time on marketing? Is it about? It's very much about the technology um, in your case, right? And keeping on top of it. Yeah. So how how do you you know how do you do that? Does your college still help? Is is are Cambridge and Oxford involved in this at all? Well, sadly, they're not involved <laughs> at all yet. But maybe someday down the line in the future, I think they've really equipped us. It's probably been about I don't know seven eight years now since uh, since those days. But um, yeah, no, um, we I think that what it is is you know we make sure that we we bring on really solid people um to help with the development and everything that we do we you know we're very forward thinking we're trying to as much as we can stay on the same page with the dfinity foundation and there's a lot of tech that these guys are putting out which is absolutely amazing it's mind-blowing it's uh it's really interesting but that also gives us quite a bit of work to do and uh we you know we've we've worked on this new canister development kit uh, so it's a, like a canister SDK extension uh, to what um, the ICCDK provides with some other cool features. Uh, so devs, you know, you can check that out. It's uh, super useful. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's a whole suite of software tools that we're putting out there. And it's, yeah, I mean, I think for, for a developer, this is kind of like a playground. What an exciting place to be just to spin up new things. And I'm sure there are a lot of other teams that are putting out really great stuff like District and Discover. Um, so really interested to see what tools and Dan from Identity Labs as well with uh, you know, the NFID stuff. So um, yeah, really, really excited about basically all this stuff that is emerging from the IC ecosystem, um, which uh, you, know, you can't see uh, many other blockchain ecosystems. and. I think, uh, yeah, it gives, it gives us devs a lot of hard work and there's no easy answer to the question of how, but, you know, here we are, you know, do, doing what we do. I think kind of sh just sharing your stories is hopefully going to give some inspiration um, to, to a few people. Um, Cassidy, I don't know if I can ask you um, about the internet computer specifically and what kind of, you know, what, what things that your team most value you know what do people kind of land on when they you know they go oh the internet computer why are you building on that so how how do you reply yeah so you know there's there's two approaches to that really you know you'll hear our technical team a lot of times speak to um the fact that this is absolutely the most scalable solution you know the limitless limitless capacity the uh, fact that it's eliminating a lot of cost and energy barriers um, but then from my angle, I'm thinking about um, actually the developers who are building on it and then the community members who are following along with the internet community 
generally speaking. So um, those individuals as a marketer are the people that I'm often uh, keenly interested in because there are a very special subsect of people who are um, committed to what's being built here. And I find them to be very different than a lot of other ecosystems. So from my perspective in the marketing side of things, when I'm thinking about why I see, it's because you really have individuals who are truly seeking you know, the next wave of impact um, in a very you know, open, motivated, insightful way um, that you don't get in a lot of other communities. For me, that's, that's really where I, I most focus on and, and care about. Right, cool. <laughs> and and uh, in the meantime, and, we found Rick, so he's ready to be oh. shut with questions. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> Hi, Rick. Thanks for joining us um, and getting over your your um, initial connection uh, issues. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm I'm going to just ask the question that I asked again, thinking that you were there. So um, please bear with me, anyone who's kind of listen, having to listen to it again. But um, I'm sure we'll value. Rick's input into this because he's one of the few people who can answer it really. Um, you guys uh, discover were one are a decentralized social media platform and you're one of the earliest um, projects building on the internet computer as I understand it. Um, so but you have a background in solidity um, so you've built on Ethereum um, and you've also worked in big tech. So we're just wondering I mean what advice do you have for all these developers who are beavering away on ICP to and recruiting a team, onboarding? How do you onboard your all your thousands of users? Because you've got about hundred thousand um, and raise capital. So if you can tell me a bit about the story. Yeah, you know, you got to treat it like a startup. Um, you know, in in Solidity or on Ethereum, which is a great protocol. You know, your smart contracts are not necessarily upgradable, right? And, and there's definitely upgrade patterns, but it's it's not intuitive enough. You know, on the IC, you feel like you're developing a traditional Web two startup, but you have this path to pivot your product quickly and understand your audience and actually evolve your product, your Web three product, just as you would with a Web two product, and that's. To me, the massive paradigm shift that's happened in Web3 is now that we can progressively make changes and understand our users better. So given that perspective, it's release and test early and try to understand the user better as early as possible. And that's kind of helped us a lot in the beginning. The very first product we released was like so basic. I don't even think we had pagination. I don't think we had moderation. We had nothing, but it was just, does this work? You know, it was a question. But like as users experience problems and as uh, features arise, you could pivot your product to kind of meet the demand of the users. And this is going to be, it's a perpetual process in the web two world and it should be a perpetual process in the web three world. But that's exactly to me what Discover's true success has been is that we can listen to the community, gather their feedback and actually make changes on the fly. You know, and even in the last week, we're, we're well into a year of building onto the IC um, well well past a year. And within this, it's what, Thursday? We've probably released five backends and maybe 20 front ends within this last week. So it's just constant iteration, constant pivoting. So it's like, what, can you, what protocol can you do that on right now? But you can definitely do it on the internet computer. So it's a lot quicker to iterate on, on your code on something like the internet computer than, I mean, on the internet computer than it is on, on Solidity on Ethereum. Right. And that's, that's the key to success for a startup is to be able to move quickly uh, and understand your, uh, your user better. And so this is really giving us all these different insights. Uh, and, you know, we're in a completely new world right now. Web three is completely different than web two. Um, there's a lot of primitives that you might find from web two, but we, you've got to test early and understand that product as early as possible. And what, I mean, you were saying that your, your users, you were responding to user demand. Um, what kind of things were your users asking for early then? Um, you know, how exactly did they influence you? <laughs> yeah, you know, once we've got the basics up, like the social primitives up, like can you comment, post, you know, uh, interact with other users? <clears throat> and there's a lot of basic things they ask for, but like NFTs, like how do we start integrating Web3 primitives into Discover? How do we provide 
the mechanisms that people expect, like NFT gating and NFT voting and things like that. So it was really starting as basic as possible. Can we verify an NFT profile photo? You know, can we verify that you actually own it and display it to the user, uh, the users with some sort of uh, we we use like a golden circle. Uh, but the thing is, is like, could we do that? That was step one. Step two was like, could we gate a community? by the ownership of an NFT and like validate you own it by the time you join it. And yes, that was another, uh, another thing that the users also asked for. And now they continue to ask for, I think we're up to like 40 or 50 of these integrations, but like, there's a whole thought about that. Like 40 to 50, that means our front end talks to 40 to 50 different canisters and our back end talks to 40 or 50 different canisters. So, you know, from that, from that thought pattern, like you're going to have a lot of integrations. Integrations are key. And like, you can see that too, like we, we needed to improve login. Like we needed two choices. Internet identity is amazing, but people were like, can I use something else? We went to Dan from NFID and he was able to provide an integration through his authentication platform to provide users that better experience. But like, I just want to drill on this real quick is that integrations are going to be key to the success of your application. We're building together. This is an ecosystem of applications. So if we're going to be successful, we have to work together and provide common interface for us to be able to do that. I think that sounds like a really great right. point. So basically other, you, you, you know, all the projects need, need to work together and you guys are even working together. Yes. Um, Adriana, Rick, I, I know myself that I can listen to Rick for, for another hour uh, <laughs> straight, but uh, unfortunately we have to cut this short and uh, maybe continue the conversation again at a later time. So Adriana, a few last words and... Uh... Okay, well, um, all the very best to all of you and all the new projects that I'm hoping to hear from this time next year. Um, so thank you very much for, this, for listening and... Um, all the best. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks for the interesting conversation. Thank you. As usual. Um, if we can go back to these slides and we move on. All right. So anyone who uh, missed my quick intro in the beginning, my name is Andrew. I work at Definity and I will be your host and moderator for the finals, the moment that you've all been waiting for. Yes. Uh, next slide. Yes. So a few words, the, the judges have, have finished uh, elaborating. We have all the winners now. And uh, yeah, we'll, so just to wrap up again, we have six tracks and then each track has a, a winner and that winner will be presenting again for, for the finals. And this presentation is going to be five minutes instead of the six uh, for the first one. And we'll have the three minute q a just as before here you can see the the prices and since we don't have any fancy audio uh, engineering in the background imagine thunderous applause for every every single prize that we are every winners that we are announcing and let me give the word to our <laughs> vp of growth uh, lomesh dutta who is going to present the the first few tracks uh, winners lomesh hey everyone wow I think the energy in the track presentation was absolutely incredible. I mean, what I was doing was just hopping back and forth between different tracks, just to making sure everything is running smoothly. And I did get, get a glimpse of a lot of different presentations. It is completely mind blowing what you all have accomplished in the last few short weeks. Uh, first of all, a huge round of applause to all the 3,700 developers that participated in the Supernova Hackathon. So we had nearly 500 teams that submitted uh, and 42 made it to the finals. So the competition was really intense and a big congratulations to all of you that just took the step and who participated. Thank you, everyone. Now, what you have built is no mean feat. No wonder the judges were having a real hard time ranking everyone and deliberating and going through the thing. Yet, uh, I would say for the spirit of the hackathon, we had to still do it. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we'll like to kind of start announcing the winners. So Andrew, if you can kind of move on to the slides with the winning tracks. All right, so on the social pie, um, starting from number five, we have CrowdEats, um, 
uh, strikers, signals, contracts, and contribute. I'll just have to zoom through very, very quickly. A huge round of uh, congratulations and applause to all of you. Um, and uh, you, you already know what prices you want, but I think more than that, I think the biggest thing is you all took the time, participated, you like uh, demonstrated uh, in the front of judges that everyone was really impressed and kudos to all of you. The scores were like, just like one point here and there between all of these winners and we were having a super hard time kind of trying to get to the winners. So, but congratulations to all the winners. Thank you. Um, and we can you skip the slide to the next one. All right, here's uh, game five, Galactic Wars, uh, number five, Pause Arena, number four. Faithful, uh, number three, Emulad and Qtopia as number one. Uh, thank you again, everyone. Mind blowing presentations, really appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, Metaverse and NFTs. So, NFO prototype, Apocalypse, number five, IC Avatar, number four, Saga Terra, number three, uh, Debunker, uh, number two, and D Squad as number one. Uh, thank you again. Uh, really appreciate everyone. And I would like to invite over Herbert um, from um, uh, our China team to essentially present the winners for the rest of the track. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Lomesh. Okay, let's see what we got for the other three tracks. Asynchronous DeFi. All right, we have number one. Congratulations, guys. Uh, number, number five in um, uh, uh, Porter Greater Marketplace. And then uh, in Noki Dex, uh, Tony Tony Labs uh, of Earn and Interest in NFT Protocol. Wow, that's a long name. Um, um, and then the ICTC in the, in the second place. And then the, the winner goes to uh, Spinner Cash. Congratulations, guys. All right, let's move on to the next one. Public goods and social impact. Number five, we have MetaMath from V1 and the Internet Computer Footprint from Carbon Crowd. And IC Maps from Christopher uh, Sutter, and Proof of um, Personhood from Astra X Network. And number one, the top prize goes to Crowdfund NFT. Congratulations. Great job, everyone. And the last track is Blue Sky, where we kind of uh, let our imagination run, uh, run wild. Number uh, in the fifth place, we have Internet Computer Services uh, from, uh, from uh, Rivram Inc. And, the D, decentralized time travel from a team, the uh, Tadi, uh, and Fox IC, another one from uh, uh, from Astra X Network, and Can DB from Can Scale, and the top one goes to Kinnick, the search engine on IC. Great job, everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations for all the tracks, and also thank you very much for preparing the presentations. We know how, how nerve wracking it is to, to come here and show us what you've done in, in short uh, six minutes all the work in the last six weeks. So let's move on to our, our finals, the last battle. These are going to be, this is going to be the order for our last six teams who are going to present one after the other. And let's see what, what the rules are. So we have to go to the next. Yes, each present, uh, presenter has five minutes now instead of the six for presentations. And then we have the same three, three minute q and I will uh, cut off everyone after five minutes. Let's uh, be mindful of time. Um, then we'll have the judges deliberating and then announcing the final winners. So good luck, everyone. And uh, yeah, yes, before we move on to the, exact, to the actual presentations, I've, we've shown this slide in the, in the beginning, but if you didn't see it or you didn't have enough time to look over all the great partners we have, uh, I would like to say again, thank you for all the partners. And without you, the supernova wouldn't have been possible. And now it's demo time. I'll keep my mic open. I think if we we can stop sharing the screen and then we will have the first team presenting. I'll get my my handy clock ready. Great. So super happy to be here pre presenting for a grand champion prize. Um, my name is Jesse and I'm a developer on Team Bonsai. So we're happy to present Contribute, which is a so social fight app. Uh, we describe it as Web 3.0 storytelling with NFTs. So currently there's lots of Web2 apps out there that uh, let writers write stories, engage with audiences and generate income from their fiction and non-fictional stories. But they're using things like external apps like Patreon and stuff to get this income. And uh, some of them have inbuilt monetization and um, the, the platforms themselves takes heavy fees. So we have created a new inbuilt monetization for writers and artists via NFTs. 
So just some stats so far of our app and how we're doing with this idea. Uh, we have around 300 active monthly users already. Uh, we've sold over 700 NFTs on our marketplace and launchpad. We've airdropped out hundreds more, still growing. Um, we're growing a nice social community <clears throat> around our Twitter and Discord. We have nearly 4K, I think over 4K Twitter followers now and 1,000 Discord members. And we've got three larger projects lined up to launch stories and NFTs in our prop on our platform. So I'd just like to jump into a live demo now of our app. So this is contribute story section. We've split the app into around three different sections here. The story section is where you'll just browse stories written by single authors as well as the larger projects. Larger projects are here in a featured section. Bonsai Warriors is us, Team Bonsai is what we launched. It's where we just talk about the world like uh, of Bonsai Warriors, the characters themselves, introduce people to background of these NFTs. And also individual authors can come in here and write their own story via the, our create story feature and link in NFTs. And we have a tutorial on how to do that. And they can try to get into that most like spot then as well. So we have our launch pad, which is where we launch NFTs from the larger stories. You know, they come on, they've got thousands of NFTs and it's not, uh, you know, suitable for them to just mint a few at a time. Uh, so we get them on board on the launch pad. So we have Bonsai Warriors is what we launched was our NFT collection was really successful and sold out. And now upcoming, we've got Pendragon Quest, which is another NFT collection that's launching now in nine days, 18 hours. And then we have our NFT market place which is also been built into the DAP. so this is where people will just be browsing through nft collections uh, exploring different nfts if you're authenticated you get to view an nft in a larger view and if you're also authenticated you get to buy it if you want to do that we've got some nice filtering too like as you expect low to high high to low by collection we have a rarity system on the nfts so we've got like rares and legendaries and things like that um, into the app as well, we have built-in profile. If you're authenticated, you'll get a, a profile so you can view uh, your stories that you've created, uh, liked stories that you've liked. Uh, we've also got like an ICP wallet so you can hold your ICP within the DAP as well as view NFTs that you own. So we have an NFT inventory as well in the DAP. So here we've got some nice filtering tools as well. Up here, you can see what you're selling and what you're not selling. Um, by rarities, collections, all that as well. Um, if you own the NFT, you get more options. You can transfer it out to any other wallet that supports our NFT standard, which is NFTA powered by the Anvil protocol and our ICP DAP that we work with closely. And you can sell your NFT, it'll pop up on the marketplace and all that good stuff. So for the demo, I just wanna purchase an NFT <clears throat> from the Bonsai Warrior story. This is called our Matoko backend, our smart contracts, all written in Matoko. Great. So thanks, guys. That concludes our demo and our presentation. Uh, super happy to be here uh, presenting in front of everyone. So I'm happy to answer any questions if people have them. Uh, yeah, next up is Cube, uh, Cubetopia. Hello, everyone. My name is Joey, and I'm here to tell you about Cubetopia. We are creating a platform to allow people to create their own space in the metaverse. This is also a huge onboarding opportunity for the Web3 and ICP space, but we also want the experience to be fun, engaging, and rewarding for our players. Right now, there is a problem in the blockchain gaming space. Most projects barely run on chain, and they're also not very accessible due to high fees or the necessity to install bloated software. The IC offers a unique solution to these problems. That's why we chose it as our ecosystem of choice. Players will soon mint their islands as NFTs, giving them true ownership and control of their digital asset and its respective data. Islands will come in different styles, sizes, and have differing resources. You will build on your island similar to how you would in games like Minecraft, we even have integrations to allow you to display and later on sell your NFTs to visitors of your island. Now, picture this. You're a big NFT collector and you want to flex your JPEGs. Right now, there isn't really a way to, but with Cubetopia, you can embed your island in a simple link that if anyone clicks, they'll instantly be transported into your world with your builds, your NFTs, and your personality. It's your own personal art gallery, except it's running on the blockchain. 
you don't actually need to connect a wallet to just hop in and check out someone's world. This will lower the barrier even further and invite more people into our ecosystem. So besides building an awesome space, what else can you do? Well, your island is going to be an integral part in the world of Cubetopia. It will produce resources that everyone needs in order to embark on quests, slay monsters and clear dungeons. In Cubetopia, you'll have your own customizable character who's got their own stats, gear, abilities, appearance and progression. You can think of it kind of as a soulbound NFT. We are also planning episodic dungeon content which will require teamwork to clear. As you might expect, cooperation in Cubetopia will bring you greater rewards than playing alone. We see three key pillars of value here. The first is rewarding players. The second is adding value to the space. And the third is onboarding new people into the IC ecosystem. How can we reward players? We are currently planning a dual token economy model with one token primarily being focused on governance and the second primarily focused on being used in game and as the primary reward for playing it. How about adding value to the space? Well, besides providing social spaces for communities, interoperability and integration of other IC projects is a big priority. When our demo went live, Versatile Studios loved it and they wanted to see their moon boots in the game. Well, right now I can tell you, if you connect your wallet and you're a holder of their Moon Boots NFT collection, your character will equip them for everybody else to see. What about onboarding people into the space? I like to think of my younger brother's generation. He's 17 and he grew up watching the lights of Jake Paul and KSI, who are now both crypto fanatics. He's been begging me to set him up a wallet and to transfer him some funds, and gaming is his bread and butter. Reverse gas fees and internet identity will massively lower the barrier of entry for demographics like this. Our unique engage to earn system will introduce special out of game quests. These will focus on introducing players to other areas of the IC ecosystem, as well as encouraging them to learn more about the underlying technologies. For example, a player might receive an in-game quest to visit Crowdfund NFT. Then they'll contribute towards a project they think is promising, and we can use the blockchain to verify this has occurred and match it to the player in Cubetopia. We'll then airdrop them a special Crowdfund NFT styled armor as a reward. We can incentivize participation by creating unique rewards for our players like this. So far, our development has been very promising, and we've had a very, very warm reception from the community. On Twitter, we have over a thousand followers, we have around 1800 Discord members, and our top post on Discover got over 900 upvotes and 600 comments. Our demo release is now publicly available to be played right on the IC. We have multiplayer integration, we have saving, and we have NFT integration as well, just to name a few of our features. We're an experienced group with a track record of delivering. We have the passion and the drive to make Cubetopia the biggest project on the IC. Thank you so much for listening. I want to leave you with the two questions that are the driving force behind our development. What value does the blockchain give this game? And conversely, what value does this game give the blockchain? Awesome, thank you very much. Next up, uh, we have D-Squad. D-Squad, are you here? We have a question in chat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give the word to Spinner Cash and then we'll figure out how, how we can get uh, these caught up. Spinner Cash, can you come on? Hello, everyone. We are the Spinner team, building privacy solutions on the internet computer blockchain. Yes, privacy is our first priority. For the most part of human history, even before money was invented, transactions is a business between two parties, because transaction is private by nature and only public by choice. But with most blockchains, this is not the case. Now with advanced math and cryptography, we have the means to fix it. Let's take a look at how a transaction is conducted on the Bitcoin network. We have Alice here sending some tokens to Bob. Bitcoin keeps track of how many tokens you have by UTXOs or unspent transaction outputs. Here, Alice has two UTXOs, 1.2 and 0.5. She sends 1.3 to Bob, and the remaining 0.4 back to herself. This equation makes up a transaction, where the sum of inputs must equal the sum of outputs. 
When Alice submits the transaction, nodes in the Bitcoin network will check the validity of this transaction against the historical records kept in the Bitcoin blockchain. We can see here the input tokens actually came from the output of some prior transactions, and they haven't been spent. So if the nodes agree that this transaction is valid, they will include it in the next block. When the next block is confirmed, we say this transaction is successful. This is basically how Bitcoin works. Now let's look at how a similar transaction can be conducted privately without revealing information to the public. Of course this can't be done on the Bitcoin network. Here we have the same transaction created by Alice. First, our ledger has to verify that Alice actually has the ownership to the inputs she wants to spend. To that end, our ledger maintains two sets of records, nullifiers to remember what has already been spent, and commitments to remember newly created outputs. They are both only cryptographic hashes, so they do not reveal any information. Next, Alice needs to give a proof showing that she actually has some tokens corresponding to previous commitments. She also has to prove this input and output equation holds true. Once Alice has produced the proof, she sends it together with transaction data to the ledger. This includes the nullifiers and commitments used in the transaction, but not the actual amount. Then our ledger will verify the proof, and also checks against its nullifier set. This is to prevent double spending. If all checks pass, the ledger will keep record of the nullifiers of the inputs, and commitments of the outputs. In the public view, what the ledger actually sees, is just a zero-knowledge proof and a set of hashes that make up the transaction. No sender or receiver, no amount of tokens. Most of the work is done at client side by the submitter of a transaction, including proof generation. This is a basic picture of essentially how private transactions are implemented in layer 2 smart contracts, like Tornado Cash or Spinner Cash. Spinner Cash is the first layer 2 protocol to bring private transactions to ICP, and soon to Bitcoin, supporting fully private transfers, in addition to deposits and withdrawals. You can directly launch the app from our website spinner.cash to have a first-hand experience of how it works. Simply send some ICP to the public deposit address to start using it. Now let's look at a demo of how Spinner Cash will work with Bitcoin. This runs on a local setup with the Bitcoin developer preview provided by Dfinity. On the right is a Bitcoin wallet, and on the left is the Spinner Cash app. Let's start by sending some Bitcoins to the Spinner deposit address. We create a transaction from our wallet, and wait until it is confirmed. Now our app has received the tokens, let's deposit them to Spinner's private ledger. It first creates a proof and then submits the transaction. Once it finishes, a new balance is reflected above. On the transfer tab, you can either send to private addresses of other Spinner users, or withdraw to a public Bitcoin address. Let's withdraw 1.2 Bitcoin to our wallet. Again, the app will create a proof before submitting the transaction. Once the withdrawal is confirmed, the new balance is reflected in the app, and we should also receive the tokens in our wallet. This is only a demo, please note that on a real Bitcoin network, deposits or withdrawals will take tens of minutes instead of seconds. But the basic workflow will be the same. Much of the smooth user experience can be attributed to Internet Computer, the platform Spinner builds on. Also, the upcoming threshold ECDSA signature support will enable us to bring private transactions to other chains. We are very excited about this capability of supporting multiple chains from the same smart contracts environment. We also look forward to enabling token swaps between private ledgers. It is our hope that more and more people will realize that privacy is not about hiding dirty socks under the rug, but about freedom. Privacy is knowledge, and knowledge is the one thing that everyone can have and no one can take away. Knowledge is freedom. Thank you for listening. We look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Awesome. If, uh, if we have no more questions, then we can go back to, to D Squad. All right, let's go. Welcome to the presentation for D Squad. My name is Isaac Valadez, and I don't have much time, so let's go. The problem that we realized in the IC ecosystem was um, Dukakis started a media outlet a few years ago. He worked with over 30 dApps, and uh, marketing was the biggest problem for early stage dApps, getting their first users and keeping them engaged. And specifically, 
they had to go onto Web 2.0 and use Web 2.0 tools to do that. We think there needs to be a Web 3 native engagement protocol, or basically a Web 3 solution to this marketing problem. What we came up with was DSquad, the first engaged to earn concepts. It's an NFT collection which rewards users for engaging with internet computer dApps. So basically it's like a shared gamification protocol. It makes it easy for dApps to add gamification and it makes it easy for users to find dApps. Uh, to make this as scalable as possible, uh, we have a dual NFT economy. The avatars are basically like membership that gets you onto the leaderboard, gets you involved in, and that they're personalized. And it's kind of a one-to-one -one ratio per one person per avatar. Accessories are rare, speculative, and perishable, and they improve your leaderboard ranks, which overall improves the rewards you'll get. Avatar minting is a really relaxed, fun experience. Anyone can personalize their avatar, use whatever custom colors they want. This keeps participation accessible across the ecosystem, provides cash flow for the project to be able to maintain operations without having to do a raise all the time, and it gives users access to join the leaderboard. The leaderboard is going to have a monthly price pool of thousands of material NFTs. Some will be worth a lot, some will be worth a little, but the great thing is this means that there's going to be a lot of winners, thousands of winners. So the idea here is even if you forgot about your avatar, within a few months, you should get something airdropped to your wallet, which will pique your interest and keep you engaged, keep you coming back to our platform. We're inventing an SDK, which protects user privacy while allowing for trustworthy validation of their activity. So this will allow us to passively increase their score as they just do things on the IC that they would do normally. We also think there's a lot of interesting use cases um, for the ecosystem as a whole once we get this going um, for interoperability and stuff like that. So we're really excited about the future of, of this. And we're also going to have a dashboard of missions which um, users can use to, to really see all the cool stuff they can do across different dApps in the ecosystem. And if you uh, have this active engagement, if you validate it and you get points and that increases your rankings, so you might get better rewards that month or have a better shot at getting rewards. Um, and some of these are you can only do once. So it kind of helps beginners get a get a boost, you know, like, like their first uh, you know, sign up for Discover, stuff like that. So accessories are minted by the material NFTs that are given out in the monthly rewards. And one cool aspect of this is uh, we actually can have brands give out uh, essences of their brand, and then you can mint branded versions of these accessories. And uh, accessories are also maintained rarely. We have documentation on how we accomplish that. So by wearing accessories, that also helps increase your engagement score. You can have up to five on your avatar at any given time, and you can only have one, one active avatar on your associate with your account. Uh, accessories slowly wear out, like real items would in the real world until they, these NFTs will get burned. And so that helps us have a deflationary mechanism to make sure that we can always uh, give out more uh, airdrops without uh, overinflating the economy and making things less rare than they should be. So finding the right combination is really part of the game here. Before Supernova, we had a pre-order campaign. We had over 5,000 pre-orders and an overwhelmingly positive response. But at that point, we only had the artwork. Uh, at, during the hackathon, we created the full minimal viral product. All the screenshots you saw earlier, those, those GIFs, those are all, all those features are live. And uh, the MVP is live, it's launched. We have about over 20 pages of documentation published on every aspect of the game. And we're gonna be first to market with this type of concept because we're literally inventing the SCK, which makes this kind of a private activity tracking possible. There are a few things mentioned here. I just want to talk about, you know, really the highlight on the SDK. What this means for dApps is you don't have to go out and develop Web 2.0 skills as much. You're going to be able to have an SDK that lets you add gamification to your dApp easily, while also giving you access to an audience that's already there, engaged, looking for different dApps to explore in the ecosystem. So what excites us most about this project is that we think that we can make the internet computer the very first gamified blockchain ecosystem. And we'd love to invite you to be part of that. So you can go to dsquad.icp.page, you'll find links to everything and be able to uh, go and mint your avatar. If you're a dev, we'd love to talk to you about ways to integrate. We're just getting started with the SDK side of things and we'd love to have some alpha testers there. We already have some lined up. And uh, as far as VCs, we've been 100% bootstrapped. We're comfortable with that, but we're always looking to offers. Or oh, yes, perfect. Okay, so let's go to the next team. We have two teams left. Next team is uh, Crowdfund NFT. 
We're a crowdfund NFT and we're a crowdfunding platform built entirely on the ICP blockchain. This is our main website where you can check out all of the projects currently crowdfunding, projects going live soon, and the projects that have completed crowdfunding rounds. We've already had a bunch come on, uh, art projects, music projects. We've even had some supernova projects be successfully funded. And we run an all or nothing model. Either the crowdfunding round is successful, in which case the project gets funded, or the crowdfunding round does not reach its goal, in which case backers get automatically reimbursed. We also are a rewards-based crowdfunding platform. That means that project creators have to commit a set of rewards in exchange for participation. Um, if the crowdfunding round is successful, then backers get minted an NFT, which is their access token to rewards. They can choose to claim those rewards or they can trade those rewards on secondary marketplaces. We built our own marketplace for Supernova on a six week sprint and you can check it out here. So why is this a, an interesting model? Why is it different and unique? First of all, let's look at traditional crowdfunding. It's a $34 billion market, that's six and a half million crowdfunding rounds every year. And it's set to increase threefold by 2026. It's $196 billion in 2025 getting crowdfunded and it's largely concentrated amongst five main players. We want to come disrupt this market. Why do we want to do that? Because it's a market with major flaws. First of all, there are no incentives for backers, no financial incentives on traditional platforms. With our NFT model, where we tie rewards to NFTs, people can sell their access to rewards for profit. We've created a financial incentive. We have no geographical restrictions on Kickstarter or GoFundMe. I can only raise in pounds sterling or in dollars. Here, you can raise all over the world. Um, there was a, a controversy this year with GoFundMe who commanded $9 million worth of funding donated to Canadian truck drivers, and they gave that money to other charities. We don't think that's right, and we want to be a more transparent and safer service. How do we do that? We make sure that our funds management is run in a tamper-proof way with controllerless escrow canister technology, which I'll explain a little more in our systems architecture. But first, how have we done so far? We've had 31 projects submitted on the platform. 17 of those have been listed, and six of those have been successfully funded. That's 7,489 ICP raised for project creators and a trading volume on secondary of 7,133 ICP. So how does the whole thing work? First of all, we run 100% on chain on the IC blockchain, a network of smart contract canisters. But the main engine of our platform is our escrow management canister. This is a piece of open source code, which you can find on our GitHub. Sorry, one second, it's here. Uh, we've made it open source so that people know exactly how funds are managed. It creates escrow canisters for every new project. Those escrow canisters, once they've been created, cannot be altered even by the crowdfund NFT team since they are controllerless. On the other side, when a participant donates money to a crowdfunding round, a sub account is created for that participation. Uh, all of the sub accounts can only be controlled by the project escrow canister, which as I mentioned is controllerless black hole. So what happens? Well, there are two main triggers. First, the um, crowdfunding round could be successful, in which case the sub accounts together fill up the project creator wallet, or the crowdfunding round is unsuccessful, in which case the sub accounts reimburse the participant wallets. Uh, the benefit of doing the sub account model, first of all, is to minimize systems failure by not putting money in one pool and making reimbursements possible. I'll add to this that reimbursements are only possible because the IC runs a reverse gas model. We couldn't do this on chain that has 30% gas fees. Uh, the second benefit of having this sub account model and not a pool system is that we minimize the incentive for hacking. If we create one large pool of ICP uh, that's getting ready to be stolen, that's not great. So that's the essence of how our systems architecture works. What is our strategy moving forward? First of all, we want to keep growing within the IC. We're uh, onboarding a lot of IC based projects, uh, charity projects and more. And we want to increase our features to compete with Kickstarter. We need an admin console. We need NFT verification in order for project creators to um, track their rewards and more. We've launched our secondary marketplace already on the supernova deadline, and we've seen some healthy activity there. The Bitcoin integration is something we're really excited about because it means that we can grow our platform uh, at Web3 at large. Basically, we will recruit projects across different blockchain networks and promote the same um, benefits that we're providing to IC-based projects. And then we want to integrate stable coins and fiat on-ramp payments in order to become the standard of crowdfunding uh, all over and to start taking significant chunk of the market share from Kickstarter, GoFundMe, and more. Thanks for listening. Now we move on to the last uh, team, which is Kinnick. 
Hi, I am Wyatt. I am a serial entrepreneur and a central founder of Kinnick. Kinnick is the world's first Web3 search engine. So what are we searching for? What is Web3 content to begin with? Web3 content is actually pretty new and it's possible, made possible with the IC protocol. <clears throat> it's Web3 content is any images, files, designs, assets, or texts natively created and stored on blockchain. And it can be served to your browser <laughs> and, and then web applications. In the old paradigm, we would have Web2 and Web3 mixed together. Like in DeFi, you'd have a backend on chain and then front end all being served from AWS or another provider that is centralized. Same goes with most NFTs. You have the assets and images being served from Web2 and the actual NFT contract on Web3. But with the internet computer, we can do all this on chain, both the backend and the front end. This makes us Web3 content and makes Web3 maxis. Kinnick is live. You can actually go to kinnick.io and try it today. It's the first search engine that allows users to input text, categories, and candidate varieties to discover relevant Web3 content. So Web3 is great, but there's a few barriers to entry. One is the high learning curve. No code, low code developing tools help to assess this. People need to be able to use Web3. Another is low accessibility. While it's NFT standards and marketplaces look to help with this, not only do they need to use it, they need to be able to enjoy using Web3. And lastly, and the most important in our opinion, is low discoverability. Currently, all Web3 products are served and discovered through Web2 centralized search. We need to be a way to do this completely on chain and in a centralized manner. Web3 needs to be discoverable because it doesn't matter if you make something great, no one can find it. So we want to make using Web3 a no-brainer for both creators and consumers. Here's how. We're going to make Web3 discoverable. Kink allows people to discover new and exciting content on Web3. How does it work? Well, it's a bit too technical for six minutes. To summarize, we found a way to index all the candidates on the IC for keywords and categories. This means we can see what's coming out, what's being used, and what's being deployed, but not being updated. We have a vision from the edge of the ICverse, and we're super keen to push it to expansion. So for the demo on the actual live site, we're going to do a little bit of traction. I wanted a full-blown product market matchmaking experiment with <laughs> the hackathon. So I started from zero, no product, no Twitter, nothing. And from that, we actually have 1,000 followers now, 10,000 unique searches week one. Um, this ended up being 10K searches in the last two days alone. We have revenue, even though we're a one month year old startup, which as a serial entrepreneur, I can say is quite amazing. And also we did crowdfund FD, which is interesting <laughs> because they just presented. Um, we were the fastest sellout of all time on their platform. So we have strong traction for one month year old startup. So I'm going to show the actual product now. If you go to any web browser and actually type in kinnick.io into your search engine or into your web browser, it will pop up. Or you do something simple like supernova. If you type this in, everything related to supernova that is on the IC will pop up. You'll see official, open source, and a few other tags. If you click on this, you get to see the source code. Or if you're interested in categories, you can search categories like DAOs, DeFi, games, and more. If you're going DAO, everything that is a DAO on the IC will pop up here. And on the right side is an ad space. This is actually done with backend code with ledger canister. It's all on chain. So you can have options. Lastly, you can actually take a canister ID. We're trying to make a feedback loop and see if we can break the IC by searching for ourselves. And we're OK. Connect pops up. The last portion of this is actually <clears throat> claiming your site. You can claim your site using a DFS command. It'll make your site official. This is the differentiation between staging and production of sites. So we have ad spots, bidding, site claiming, and spotlighting new applications. We have used innovative methods to create a new product with one month KPIs that can make universe blush. Web3 search is essential for all Web3 products from any blockchain. We think it's vital for <laughs> also Web2 users and other blockchains in general. Please vote Kinnick. Um, and please reach out after the event to discuss more. We're at Kinnick underscore app on Twitter. Um, thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you everyone for the, the great presentations. To be honest, I, I don't envy the judges now to, to pick our, our grand champion. But um, in the meantime, while they're, they're deliberating, we can, um, we can move on to and can have a few words about the, our developer grant program. Let me give the mic to Fulco, who is leading the developer grant program at Definitive. Thank you, Andrew. Um, while the judges deliberate on who will be the grand supernova winner, I will give a quick overview of our developer grant program. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. I actually used to be a software engineer and I participated in the previous Definity Hackathon as a finalist. 
So I know the nervousness and excitement that you must be feeling at the moment. Uh, but since then, I started working at the foundation. And if you are a current grantee, you have most likely already met me. And if you are applying, you probably will. So the first thing I want to note is that even if you didn't get selected as a finalist or winner today, uh, you should still apply to the program. We had hundreds of submissions and sadly could only pick 42 to be the finalist, but it was really tough. And I've seen plenty of other great submissions that could potentially get some funding to the grant program. So let's start with a quick overview of what the developer grant program actually is. Uh, the grant program was launched over a year ago at Genesis and is part of a larger ecosystem fund committed by the Definity Foundation. Its goals are to catalyze growth of the ecosystem, make the internet computer more approachable, and to provide support to uh, promising teams. We currently give grants in around three tiers. Uh, the first is the 5K grant, which is a great way to get started if you're an individual developer or a team of one or two and you're just starting out. Uh, 25K, which is the most common tier, and 100K, which is mostly given as a follow-up grant after somebody completed a smaller grant first. Uh, so far, uh, we have funded about 260 grants and we still have plenty in the pipeline. Um, doesn't go to the next slide, got it. Um, and uh, yeah, we're still looking for more. So how does the application process actually look like? Uh, the first step in the process is to go to definity.org slash grants. And here you'll see a big apply button, which takes you to the initial form. In this forms, we'll ask a couple of questions like what is the background of your team and some GitHubs, uh, a description of the project, and what are some of the milestones that you are hoping to achieve with your grants? And finally, uh, what unique benefits would your grant application bring to the internet computer ecosystem? After you submit this form, the grant committee takes a look at the application. And if we think it's promising, then we send you an interview invitation for a 30 minute screening interview. During this interview, you know, we like to know you, get to know you a little better, uh, hear about your project in your own words and ask some questions that might have come up based on the application. Uh, we also leave some time for you to ask us questions, of course. Um, after the interview, the gr grant committee again comes together and um, if we think it's a promising grant, then we accept you in the program and we send you the milestones setting form. And this is actually quite an important form because here you'll lay out the milestones that are associated with a part of the grant, a part of the disbursement that you will get after each milestone. Once we sign off on that, you're all ready to go and you can start your grant. Now, of course, what you're wondering about now is how do I write a good grant application? So uh, the first step is uh, pretty obvious, which is to do your research. The internet computer is a really innovative blockchain, which can do a lot of things that other blockchains can't. Uh, through the reverse gas model, you can create dApps where your users don't need to buy crypto. Um, it's blazingly fast. You can store far, for far cheaper than any other blockchain, which allows you to actually host the entire application on chain. And Knowing all of these things before you write an application can be helpful in, you know, forming what your project goals are. Um, the second is to test out the internet computer beforehand, you know, uh, download the SDK, uh, go to the cycles faucet and actually deploy a canister on chain before you submit your grant application so that you actually know what you're getting into and what some of the technical challenges might, would, would be for your grant. Um, of course, if you participated in Supernova, you have already done this and you can just show us your supernova application. Third tip is to scope your project correctly. Sometimes we get a grant application with like a two year long roadmap or even four years. Um, but what we're actually looking for with the grant program is more of like a smaller MPP, like something like 16 wor uh, weeks worth of dev work um, so that it becomes a bit more uh, manageable and that we you know, can divide it up in some clear features that should be delivered at each milestone of the grant. And uh, figure out the price point, of course. Um, we expect more from a 25K grant than a 5K grant. So sometimes we sadly also have to reject application. Uh, I thought I could maybe give you some of the most common reasons for rejection. The first is that the application itself is incomplete. Some fields on the form haven't been filled out or, um, you know, contain very little information. 
sometimes the technical scope is not well defined. Um, for instance, you know, somebody says he wants to build a metaverse, uh, but we would also like the concrete step on how you are planning to build this metaverse. Like, um, we're not just interested in the what, but also the how. Uh, third, sometimes a project is better suited for venture funding. Um, starting with a small MVP doesn't work. You have like a lot of work to get done first before you can go live and uh, you need a lot of upfront capital. And then sometimes it's maybe better to go to a, a VC directly and we can put you in contact with those. Finally, lack of technical credentials or track record. Um, sharing your GitHub always helps. Uh, if you don't have a public GitHub, but you do have some dev experience, maybe you can tell us about previous jobs that you worked or your study. Um, if there's like nothing at all, it hurts your chances in the grant application. And finally, proposed ecosystem benefits are impure. Of course, we want the grant to have some benefit to the IC and not other blockchains, for example. There are also a couple of things that are out of scope. We don't do token or NFT sales and launches or user reward schemes, legal marketing. We really focus on devs building things with the developer grant program. Uh, next slide, please. So you're accepted into the program. Now what? Uh, we're at milestone approval and kickoff. So as I said, uh, you get a couple of milestones and based on the grand tier, you get two, three or four. And at each of the milestones, you either get a forum or an interview invitation. And there we not only check out your process, uh, your progress, but also we're interested in, you know, what are your blockers? Is there anything we can do? Did you run into some niche technical problem that couldn't be resolved in the forum? Do we need to put you into contact with one of our engineers? Um, are there other grantees that could maybe benefit uh, from your product that we should put you into contact with? Uh, we're not just trying to give away money. We want to create a network here of TIC. And I have to say that um, during my track, Blue Sky, it's amazing to see like uh, all the coordination going on between grantees. Like I have had multiple people saying, I will use this project in the chat. Um, and that's the kind of thing we also try to encourage with the grant program. So yeah, apply now. Um, you already have a no, it could always turn into a yes. Uh, I will look at every application that comes in, you know, spam me with hundreds of applications. I want to see this ecosystem grow uh, and go to the moon. And I encourage you all to apply. Um, have we picked a winner already, Andrew, or is there some time for Q and A? We have some time for Q and A, and I have some some questions before we move on to the to the winner announcement. So let's say I want to build something on the IC, but I'm not quite sure what to build. Um, if I don't have an, a good idea to to build on the IC, can you guys help, or um, do they have resources? For yeah, me of to, course. To look at. Yeah, people can come with their own projects, but there is of course uh, also a wish list from our side. Uh, the one thing that is almost sure funding, if you're capable of producing it, is agents. I want to see an agent for every language, uh, programming language that exists. For those who don't know, an agent uh, is a library which allows you to communicate from uh, yeah, whatever programming language to the IC. Um, other things that I think always have a good chance of making it are things like developer tools, like I don't know, a plugin for VS Code that makes life for developers easy or other tooling that makes, uh, you know, everything that makes life for a developer easy, like has a multiplicative effect on our entire ecosystem. So those uh, would be some things I would be looking for if you don't know what to build. Amazing. So if, um, are there any additional perks besides funding? Yeah, so as I said, we uh, put people into contact among the grantees, uh, but also after you have finished your grant, we uh, have some warm contacts with uh, people at VC funds. And if you, you know, over delivered, then we'll definitely put you into contact with those. Um, finally, as I said, yeah, you can, um, we can bring you into contact with engineers um, for if you run into any problems. And I'm also always available at grants at divinity.org to answer all your questions. Um, yeah, we have some questions actually from the audience. So let me ask a few of those. Um, you mentioned the, uh, you mentioned user reward scheme. Uh, could you define that please? Yeah, so let's say you've built a, a DAP and 
you know, you give your users like uh, a ten dollars of crypto if they sign up for your uh, dev. That would be more like uh, marketing. Um, you know, spending money to gain more users, but it wouldn't be a development. And the developer grant program is really uh, focused on milestones that include, you know, writing codes and adding new features. And one last question. Um, let's say if I have a great idea, but I don't have the technical expert expertise, can you help me with uh, the development of the project? Or would the person have to be finding uh, the developers themselves? Yeah, so uh, the foundation is pretty busy with uh, a ton of features that need to get out. Um, so yeah, you would have to find some developers yourself. Uh, I would encourage you to go to uh, the Divinity Dev Discord. It's pretty active. And um, there was a find the team channel for Supernova. Um, I think you, know, you could also have a find the team for uh, your grants. There's also a job seekers and a job finders channel there. Um, so yeah, you do have to find your own dev. There are scarce resource, um, but you know some people have found uh, their partners uh, online. Perfect. Thank you very much, Fulco, for the presentation and answering my questions. And now we have to mix up a few things because uh, the judges are still uh, deciding who will be the grand champion of Supernova. So if uh, if we can share the screen and go to the community uh, voting, then I'll. I'll talk about the last, last, last award, which will be the community award. And, and then we can, we can come back and, uh, and announce the, the grand champion. Um, after Supernova, which will be tomorrow, J July 1st, we will announce the, the community voting and we'll open it up for, for 10 days. So you, the community, uh, can decide which team you like the best and you can, can place your votes. One, one great thing about the community voting is that you will get a chance to win one of our new Motoko NFTs. If you haven't seen, we released an article about the, the new 3D Motoko Max. And um, in my personal biased opinion, I think that they look looking great. And uh, we will be airdropping to, to discover, uh, discover users, the ones who, who have voted. And the way you do it, we will release a landing page soon in our definity.org website, and it will have the it will have all the submissions that are that qualified or met the minimum requirements. And then you can uh, scroll through or search through them and then pick the, the team that you like the best. And once you find the team that you want to vote for, then you go to Discover. We will have a link right on the landing page. If um, if you don't have yet, don't yet have an internet identity to log in with Discover, then you would have to create that. Uh, we have a, a seamless uh, user experience, a user flow creating the internet identity, and it will create a pseudonymous, um, pseudonymous um, identity for you, which means that the identity you use to authenticate with on Discover will not be uh, tracked or cannot be tracked throughout different applications on the internet computer, which is, a, I think, a great, great feature that just comes out of the bo box on the IC. So once you have your internet identity, then you can log into Discover, Create a create a user. Discover is the largest uh, decentralized social network on Rodig on the IC, 100% uh, on the blockchain, and you will find a a portal. Discover has portals similar to how Reddit has subreddits or com little communities, and these communities or we will have a portal set up that is called Supernova. And in the Supernova portal, you will see a a poll, and there you can find your your team that you like the best. And of course, we have uh, hundreds of, of submissions, so you won't have to scroll down to, to find the one that you like, but uh, there will be a search bar. So you can just copy paste the name of the, the project from our landing page to discover, and then uh, vote this way. And anyone who voted will be eligible for, the, will be entered into this raffle and, and uh, have the chance to win the 3D Motoko NFT. One thing, yes, we ask for a phone verification because um, to get, so that, uh, bots will be not entering the, the Discover uh, community voting. And yes, I will really I will be releasing a detailed tutorial in a few days or hopefully tomorrow that will go through the same steps again and I'll show you exactly how to do each step and uh, and we'll we'll write an article as well so that you you will have an easy time doing this voting. Awesome. Uh, are we good with the judges or have we already picked the winner? I should be the one knowing this. 
Okay, we still need a few minutes. So maybe I should stay silent for a while or should I do some? Um, I'm not a good stand-up comedian, so I don't think that will be very entertaining for anyone. And the uh, and the the cringe fest that I can uh, let you or entertain you with for the next five minutes is probably not the not the ideal scenario. All right, I'll. Uh, <laughs> I'm seeing in the chat that I should be telling jokes. That's not gonna happen. It's um, it will be haunting me on YouTube forever if I if I tell, tell a bad joke. Then. Okay, I'm I'm seeing that we're getting very close to to picking the final winner. And in in the meantime, I might pick awkward silence or awkward silence and bad jokes, just altering one after one after the other. Actually, write down in the in the chat which team would you pick for for the grand champion. I'll be reading them out as they come. Crowdfund, Icy Tuts, good one. Oh, I think Icy Tuts is going to win the 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 grand champion. Kinnick, Crowdfund, Kinnick. I wonder if uh, if our judges agree with the with the chat. The judges are judges for a reason. They have uh, a keen eye for for interesting projects. Contribute crowdfund NFT, Bonsai, Kinnick, Kinnick. Looks like not everyone agrees. That's good. That means that all of the teams that uh, that, were, that made finals were really good. And it's um, that's probably the reason why I'm still talking and uh, our judges are, are uh, deliberating. Andrew, I would like you to ask uh, maybe the mods uh, what they thought about today and uh, what their expectations are, maybe. What, what did they see? What do they think about it? That's a good idea. Do we have anyone who can give uh, short feedback on, on today's Supernova demo day? Yeah, sure. I can uh, tell a little bit about my track, the Blue Sky track, if you want. Yeah, please. Um, so everybody who's here for the main room, uh, you have seen Kinnick, which was the winner of the Blue Sky track. Um, but I do want to give some extra attention to uh, the other projects in Blue Sky. Um, CandyB, if you're building an amazing database uh, that needs to scale on the IC, that needs to scale to many gigabytes of data completely on chain, um, check out Can Scale CandyB. Fox IC. Uh, was a project that enabled you to log in with your MetaMask and sign transactions, send ICP with your MetaMask wallet. DTI, if you need like a sort of a cron surface, um, you know, um, if you, yeah, if you're not a programmer, you might not know what a cron surface is, but you can basically set a time. And then at that time, you will constantly send an event from uh, through DTI. We had Union. A uh, great project that now allows you to create a DAO from scratch um, instead of, you know, a company or um, no company. You could have like a mix between an organization and uh, a canister smart contract that contains all your business logic. We had Candid Plus. If you're familiar with Candid UI, this is Candid UI on steroids. And finally, we had. Uh, internet computer services, which is like an AWS console for all your canisters. And I, it was really hard to pick between these projects. Um, but yeah, again, thank you for everybody in the Blue Sky track. And thanks, Fulco, for, for jumping in and uh, and uh, letting us, a bit, uh, yeah, telling us more about Blue Sky who, who weren't there. And actually, I'm hearing that we are ready for the, the finalists. If we can share the screen again and we can go back to the, the winner announcement. Awesome. So again, thank you everyone for, for creating the presentations and, and sharing them with us the second time. We've seen some incredible things being built on the internet computer. And today that was a, that was a perfect example. All right. Um, I, let me give the, the, the grand, grand champion prize is going to, uh, you can see here. And let me give the word to 
to Dominic to announce the, the winner. Dom, are you here? All right. Um, so um, this was very, very difficult. Um, we've been deliberating and talking and, you know, uh, actually after being involved in this sort of uh, grand champion process, I don't envy the judges who, you know, dealt with the different um, sections to, to get the, you know, to, to produce the finalists because, you know, everything's just so good and I, I'm just staggered at what's been produced and we're in year on and we're seeing the projects of this quality. Um, so with respect to the finalists, I can tell you that, you know, we went through uh, um, a judging process and, you know, pretty much everyone ended up, um, <laughs> it, it, the, 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 there was nothing to choose between them. The numbers are all very, very similar. So, um, you know, we thought, well, look, how are we going to choose one grand finalist from, from, from this? And, well, you know, we started talking about, um, you know, the, the original criteria. And, and I'd, we ended up deciding we're going to share, which is a bit of a cop out, I know, but we're going to share the grand champion prize. We're going to choose two grand champions. Um, and I'll explain why, and I'll go through them. Um, you know, now the, 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 there are sort of five um, things that, you know, we're judging on as X factor, you know, technical competence, um, social impact, pro you know, progression, how far you know you've actually developed the thing, um, and, and the IC factor. And um, I'll tell you uh, the two, the two with great difficulty that we ended up choosing, um, uh, and I'll explain the reasons why. Um, they were Spinner and um, Cubetopia, and yeah. And, and, and I explain both of them very different. And, and there was, you know, we, we, we decided to have two grand champions. Um, and I'll explain why. Um, essentially, both of them are pretty technically challenging projects. Um, and both of them um, really do illustrate how it's possible to build things on the internet computer blockchain that you just can't build any, anywhere else um, for different reasons. So, Cubetopia um, has this very interesting concept where you can create your own sort of metaverse um, land, and then you know you get a link to it, and you can stick that link um, in, into places like your Twitter profile, and it becomes an anchor. So I think that's a very interesting idea. You can imagine that you know all over the existing um, social media universe, you could find these anchors, and people could click on them and just enter into different areas of the metaverse. And I kind of like the idea I could put that on my Twitter and you know, somebody could, I could just leave that open and someone could just click on it and they'd be in the, the, this kind of meta, metaverse land that I'd created. And also like that within that, there's some quite interesting tokenomics being um, developed and you know, ideas about how you can essentially turn it into a marketplace for NFTs and eventually other things. I mean, let's not forget NFTs don't just have to be art. Um, and you can also, um, you know, gamify that environment. And, you know, uh, it will be possible to have all of that metaverse data on the internet computer, make the whole thing completely autonomous under the control of the service nervous system. And even multiplayer stuff will be possible on, on lower trust subnets with less replication. So um, I think Cubetopia, yeah, illustrates quite the magnitude of what's gonna be possible. So, um, yeah, that, that's why we chose um, Cubetopia as one of the grand champions. Um, and Spinner Cash. Well, Spinner Cash, <laughs> I have to say, I was, I was shocked when I saw Spinner Cash because, um, yeah, that particular application didn't occur to me. And, you know, this, I think, just, I mean, look, um, the internet computer is a blockchain. It runs using advanced cryptography. And, um, you know, people like me and, and um, I've been in crypto for many, many years. Um, but we got a lot of cryptographers on, you know, on the project. It, um, and, you know, cryptography is very, very powerful, especially when you can run it within a sort of trustless, autonomous environment. And I think Spinner, Spinner Cash will be very controversial because um, it provides a means essentially with Threshold DCDSA to um, transplant a privacy layer onto any other blockchain. Um, you know, there are going to be some uh, controversial applications of that, you know, computers, a mixture and things like that. But um, 
it's immensely powerful. There are very strong arguments for privacy, um, you know, especially if you live in some parts of the world. Um, and, you know, I, I, again, it's just illustrating something that's possible on the internet computer. It's just you can't do it anywhere else. Um, that with threshold ECDSA and, and with other features that are coming that are going to augment that, you know, it's, it's possible to sort of uh, be a kind of meta glue between different blockchains. And that meta glue can, can, can do some very, very interesting things. Um, and if, if, if anyone, um, you know, could see just the, the amount of work involved behind the scenes with something as apparently simple as thresholds, ECDSA, or even the chain key cryptography, you know, when you get into the non-interactive DKG and all that kind of stuff, key resharing and so on. Um, it, it's immensely powerful. Um, there's nothing else like this, you know, on the horizon. And so I think we've got these two kind of contrasting, you know, this pair that we've chosen is kind of contrasting pair. One is um, showing, you know, uh, how um, blockchain can reach the masses. You know, I, I really do believe something like Utopia could be absolutely huge. Um, and really reimagining social media, reimagining re games, reimagining ownership of things through NFTs, um, reimagining the whole thing and, and having that data on the internet computer and actually be able to confer real ownership because it's autonomous and, 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 and so on. I think that's incredible on the one hand. Um, that's obviously very, very mass market, but you know, Spinner Cash on the other hand is kind of the opposite, right? It's, it's a little bit old crypto and um, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's marvelous. So I think those two um, are our grand champions and congratulations. Also congratulations to all the kind of run of the other finalists. I mean, everyone produced something that's just stunning and this, this was a very close call, but congratulations to, to Keytopia and Spinner Cash for being our two grand champions. Well done. So, yeah. To build on what wow. Tom just said at the very end and also seeing the chats, if you disagree with the with the decision of the judges, keep in mind that each of these teams have already won, and they are the winners of of their uh, respective tracks. And picking the the grand champion is is incredibly difficult, as as we have seen. And if you can move to the next slide, I would like like to pass the word on to our uh, chief growth officer for the last time, Eva Oberholzer. And uh, I'd like to say goodbye for myself, and thank you very much who who joined us today. Thank you, Andrew. And again, congratulations to the winners, but actually everyone who participated. I have to honor to good final words with you regarding the Supernova Hackathon. Um, uh, first of all, like what we've seen today is really mind blowing. <laughs> it's really mind blowing. And I guess most of the people, um, especially from the blockchain space, would consider it as impossible. Um, based on the infrastructure that is out today. So I'm extremely proud um, of all the great ideas that we've seen, not only today, but also in the pre-rounds. I guess it's extremely hard uh, to take a decision. We saw it uh, now with, with all the winners from the tracks, but um, I, I actually consider everyone who participated a winner um, because I think we're here uh, really experiencing what innovation means and what true web one calls it or uses it sometimes as a buzzword what that means um again many thanks and also thank you to all the partners that helped us to um make this all happen a big big thank you to the team um so i'm with the definity foundation now for three months um when we end but we were not aware what traction we would achieve so it um, what the team has put up. Um, so my world to my last world's words are also for 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 the team. Um, Yechi, you saw her at the beginning. She was basically ran the entire project. We have background with it, uh, who organized the entire event. We have Andrew as the host or Julia or indeed so did workshops and, and made sure that they bring you up up to speed. Uh, regarding the internet computer and also like going through all this project that was a huge team of effort so so big thank you um from my end i would like to take one or like a, um, a sentence and that was not really planned up from cubetopio they used two sentences at the pitch presentation 
first one was what value does the blockchain bring to their project and then second was um value does the project bring to the blockchain and i guess this is actually where uh, me and the team come in we've seen that Definity is able to really um come up with one of the, the tasks that we've seen currently and, and most um greatest possibilities a great r d team so for blockchain space the next phase is now it's going to be used and exactly for that purpose we need projects like you community member um who who is taking this infrastructure who's obviously also enhancing it who's taking it over and build on it and i guess then we can truly show what the value is not only to technical people the 3000 4000 devs that we've seen today but also like the users that don't need a wallet as you showcase today that don't need to have any idea of a blockchain or any tech stack and and just um use the capabilities so um those are my last words words um we are even in time that makes me more proud um with this hackathon like the winners uh, that is not the end of the hackathon so we still up we will announce that quite soon it's um it's going to be available in the next few days also that's a email this for community and also full could present to you the the grant program so even in winner projects i'm pretty sure that and i really hope that you're going to stick in the ecosystem and that we will be in touch with you and see many many more winners and projects coming out of this hackathon so um i'm happy to stay or I, I advise you to stay tuned and um, I'm very happy to I look forward to um, continuing continuously working with you on these amazing amazing ideas and with that I wish you a very Sunday evening or um, or morning or even night wherever you are thank you very much and that concludes supernova demo day thank you I just want to say thank you guys quickly uh, is this whole thing about to end because uh, yeah, just wanted to say thank you. Literally, uh, did not expect this at all. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Emilio, Robert, Naf, Dallas, the Japanese Cubetopia community, the Bali community, Big Max. Big thank you to uh, the whole Definity team for making the platform. And a thank you to all the judges uh, involved today as well. Thanks, guys. But you can't believe it. <laughs> Adam, that like, thanks. That's appreciated, Jay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dom. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Bye-bye.